This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video. I'm playing with my most recent World Chalice deck list yet again. I am putting up this video also in the same day as the previous gameplay video that I just put up, uh, playing against the Quick Draw deck, because the person didn't want to play a full match, they left early, uh, and the entire purpose of me playing this for a video is so that I could actually show you guys some side decking patterns uh, based off the matchup and stuff like that because I've had a lot of questions about that. So figured I would just keep that video as is and I would just do another video that would go up in the same day. So not really too much to talk about here. If you're looking for more in-depth knowledge of like my reasoning for card choices and stuff like that for this deck list, then go check out one of the mini deck profiles that are on my channel. They all give some form of insight to basically the overall picture of what's here. Uh, but other than that, Let's not waste any more time and let's just jump straight into the first game and see if we can actually get a proper match out of the Gideon test server. See, for some reason, that even though the uh, the last game ended with my opponent timing out and my opponent not continuing, it's putting that I gave the uh, connection error, which is interesting. I hope that doesn't become an actual problem uh, for this recording, because if it's on me, then that actually is horrible. Uh, but, okay, what is it with people winning rock, paper, scissors and then just choosing to go second? I don't understand. I mean, I'll take it, but I still don't understand it. But I've got Venus plus Exodius plus Kyoto, so like this is, oh, this is this is one of those uh, this is one of those insane hands. Uh, depending on what happens here, do you have Max C? Oh, you got Ash Blossom. Well, you just turned your Ash Blossom into a Burn spell. Congratulations. Um, it's it's fantastic how people just don't understand how Ash Blossom works when it comes into relation with Venus. Uh, they just Ash Blossom it, and they think that that's that. But no, it doesn't negate the effect permanently for the rest of the turn. It just negates that instance of that effect. So, now you're down a card, and I'm already doing my play string. Uh, I should just drag that little pop-up box over here. <laughs> that would probably be the best. Um, so we'll drag it back down here. Uh, I'll put it over my opponent's board, actually. That way I can see my shit. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, but so Link Spider up here. Uh, how many counters I have on this? Just one right now. Uh, okay, so we're just going to do the regular Exodius play. Nothing too fancy, nothing too special. Link these two into that. I've got the Guard Dragon as well, which does offer some form of protection. If my opponent had Ghost Ogre, he should have already Ghost Ogre the Venus, so I can go throughout the Aurum play uh, with not really that much uh, of an issue, at least. At least that's what I'm thinking. Uh, but so I'll go into the Aurum. I've got the Guard Dragon in my hand, which means that that's a World Chalice name, which means that I do not have to use uh, the uh, I do not have to use the uh, the Orum effect because normally Venus plus Exodius is only a draw two unless you use Orum to bring back Ebe, Um because that's what gives you uh, that's what gives you the uh, third draw because it you know upgrades one of your Shine Balls into an Ebe, basically. Uh, but with any World Chalice name in my hand, it becomes much more reasonable because I then get to hold on to the Orms effect, so it actually gets really powerful. Uh, but so we'll get rid of these into that, and then we'll get the other two Shine Balls out of the deck, uh, and we'll go from there. So Shine Ball. Luckily, the, the Gideon server has this thing where it doesn't let you surrender um, until both players have a turn, uh, so that's cool. It means if you're really trying to surrender, you have to close out the program and reload it and all that. And with if you're playing on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2, uh, that becomes a big like issue because sometimes Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2 takes a long time to load, and it's just it's why would you why would you be wasting your time like that essentially? Uh, but so I'll summon this Imduk again, and then I will uh, use this to add Gamma Seal before I draw three cards. Uh, so the Gamma Seal is in my hand, and then these get to go into my Nin Gerasi. Uh, Nin Gerasi, the Rogchilis Warrior. Uh, and then we'll mask it from Ash Blossom, even though he's already used Ash this turn. He, he can't use another one. Not too worried about it. Uh, but okay, World Legacy World Chalice plus World Legacy's Heart. That's actually really, really good. Um, actually just very good, okay. So we'll go into Firewall Dragon with this and Guard Dragon. So Firewall over here. Uh, and then the Ningirsu's effect will trigger, specialing this out of my hand. So we'll special summon this. Uh, then I'll link it into an Imduk. And then I'll get my additional normal summon for the uh, for the World Legacy World Chalice. Tributing this to normal summon. And then I can pop this to bring back Ningirsu. 
and then this will summon Lee and uh, and a card out of my deck. So Ningirsu will come out here, and then the World Legacy World Chalice will trigger. That's insane value, by the way. Whenever you're able to pop World Legacy World Chalice with Aurum, one that lessens the impact of like a Ghost Ogre potentially, uh, but also it uh, it's just fantastic for you uh, overall because of what it allows. Uh, but so which one chosen? It goes over here, and uh, Lee goes right here. Then the Lee's effect can trigger. This turn structure is just insane, and I've got this as well, so like that's also just really good. Uh, but so I'll add uh, I'll add World Chalice Chosen Man to my hand, and then these two can go into these two can go into Trigate. Um, I can use this to bring to add back two cards, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, seems kind of all right. Uh, so Trigate Wizard with these two, and this is an extra link as well, I believe. Um, because I've got access into a Chosen in my graveyard already, which means I can go Chosen uh, plus... Uh, I can add back Chosen and Lee with this. Uh, so I'll definitely add back Chosen, 100%, and then I'm going to add back Lee. I've got that Guard Dragon in Grave as well. Uh, so this is an extra link without even having to use my uh, Guard Dragon from Grave, so that's fantastic. Um, so Link Spider over this... Uh, the firewall will trigger its effect, yes. I'll summon a vanilla out of my hand. And then I'll take all seven monster card zones. Should be pretty self-exclamatory. So we'll do this. And then firewall's effect. We'll special gamma seal. And the only reason I have any any way of losing this game is if my opponent has, like, raw sphere mode. <laughs> and even if he does, he's going to be tributing, uh, like, gamma seal this and this. Uh, and I still have an entire hand. So, like, and I've still got the Ningirsu. He still has to out Ningirsu. Um, and I've still got Ash Blossom that he has to play through, all that. So, Fossil Dig, I'll negate that. Um, I've gotten in the habit of just snap negating um, the first card I see my opponent play with the Gamma Seal. That way, if he plays any more cards that go to the grave, uh, like Terraformings or like Upstart or Desires or shit like that, this gets another counter. <laughs> so it like it allows it allows me to just low key negate four cards in a turn, um, but so he's playing some sort of Dino deck. My opponent has surrendered. Okay, so I do not understand. It keeps telling me connection terminated. I don't get it. There's it must be something wrong with my client maybe, um, as far as like Percy goes. But like at the same time, I haven't been having problems with this before. I have no idea why it's a thing now. I can only assume that my opponents are surrendering and then like just exiting out because they see that it's a match. Because the next screen that I should be presented with is the side decking screen. But this is not the side decking screen, this is the deck editing screen that I went to very quickly so that I could close out the video while also having that connection terminated thing on the screen. So like, I don't understand. Like, I don't get it. What's what's the deal? I don't understand. Uh, whatever. I'm just gonna go and try and jump into another game and see how this goes because honestly, it, if it's not self-exclamatory how you do side decking with this deck, I guess I could explain um, I, I guess it would be better for me to just explain in this rather than, uh, rather than trying to jump into another game and still possibly having the extra other error, but essentially, like, if you're, if you're gonna side for going first, right, if you, if you lost game one and you're gonna side for going first, anti-spell is pretty good against almost every deck in the format, whether it be Spiral, whether it be Pendulum Magician, whether it be ABC, whether it be Trickstar, you put those three in, you take it, you, you put the anti-spells in, you take out the evenly matched. You're gonna leave the Kyoto's in because you're going first. You're gonna take out an, you're gonna take out some other cards that are like not that amazing, uh, and you're gonna put in uh, you're gonna put in those and basically just like uh, keep your deck as is. Like you'll take out like an Ash Blossom um, or like Max C. Uh, it depends on what what you're afraid of or not. Like if you uh, if you're afraid of your opponent potentially having Max C against you, you can leave the Ash Blossoms in. Otherwise. You can just swap them out for uh, just leave two ashes in, and that way you have hand traps you could potentially draw into off your Ningirsu. The deck list doesn't really change that much when you uh, when you side deck in that pattern. But if you're going to be side decking for going second, if you won game one or if you won game two and you're going into that, what you're going to do is you're going to be depending on the matchup, you're going to be putting in more of these hand traps. You're going to be putting in more of these kaiju's. Pretty typically, the the first thing that I do is usually like put these kaiju's in, put in the the water, uh, put in the uh, Interrupt Kaiju Slumber, then take out the water fronts, uh, and then do stuff like take out an unexpected die, and then take out a vanilla uh, just to make room because your deck is inherently a bit more consistent going second uh, because you have the sixth card that you're going to be drawing. 
Um, so like taking out like World Legacy's heart, uh, putting in more cards that are good going second, like the third evenly matched. So like you'd take out World Legacy's heart, you would take out a vanilla if you need room, and that's why you take out an unexpected die. Uh, it just it really depends. Like you put in the kaiju package depending on the matchup, or you put in a bunch of these hand traps depending on the matchup. If it was if I was playing against Pendulum Magicians, right? If I was gonna be playing against Pendulum Magicians. This would be the uh, this would be the side decking pattern that I would do is I'd I'd put in Raigeki I'd put in interrupted Kaiju Slumber that's to deal with Baguska plus like purple poison fields uh, I put in the Kaiju's because those are good take out the water fronts uh, because those are bad going second and also putting in the evenly matched so you can just blow out their board and that's pretty much it uh, the Max C would come out you would put in the Ghost Ogres Ash Blossom isn't that amazing against it you'd put in the other Ogre. Um, like, it's, it's, it's all just, like, very, it's very simple when you actually look at it. Like, um, like, you don't really, t you haven't really taken too many consistency cards out of your deck because the only real combo extender you took out was the unexpected die. Uh, the vanilla is kind of just, like, you know, uh, a freebie that you can take out. Whenever I take out an unexpected die, I do take out a vanilla. Um, and then, like, you're going second, so you have six cards. So, like, you have a higher percentage of drawing into the rest of your good cards in your deck. Uh, which is still over half of your deck. Uh, and then uh, you have these blowout cards like Rageki, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, Triple Evenly Matched, the Kaijus. Uh, you have a bunch of good going second cards. Uh, and then depending on the other matchups as well, like if you're playing against something like Trickster, or you're playing against something else, then obviously these Kaijus, instead of being put in, you put in like the Twin Twisters and shit like that. So it's very easy for you to uh, sort of get at and understand. So so basically, that's going to be it for this video. I really wished that I could have gotten into an actual match so I could have actually side-decked, uh, but, I mean, like, it's it's whatever. You just kind of have to deal with the things that you're given. You have to deal with the hands that you're given. Uh, and this deck is just one of those that I guess people just don't want to play against, or I'm having problems, question mark? I mean, I wasn't having problems with Gideon server when I was testing, when I was doing some gameplay, when I was playing before, before I started trying to film. So I'm assuming that it's just people just exiting out of their programs and uh, surrendering out of the side deck screen uh, that's uh, that's allowing that to be the case. Because you can surrender out of the side deck screen. I do remember that. But anyway, I guess that's going to be it for this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, links is always in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the videos I've been doing and want to help support my ability to continue making them, then Patreon is the best way to do so. And even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support. And it has a huge amount of beneficial help value to my cause here. And you'd have my eternal gratitude if that's something you'd like to do. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do, as I've already said. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of upset. So now the video is over, as usual, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertzen, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, way more than I could ever express. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.